All right, for this video, I wanted to talk about HSAs or health savings accounts and how these amounts, both the contributions and distributions are reported in TurboTax. So we do have uh, the TurboTax self-employed version here for our, our sample uh, taxpayer, so we'll come back to this in a bit. But first, I wanna go over some of the information on this slide and just cover a bit of background on these HSAs and how they work. So health savings accounts, uh, are effectively give a taxpayer the ability to set aside money for future medical expenses, but by setting aside the money, they get a tax deduction, right? So uh, the HSA accounts, you fund the account, you get a tax deduction on your return, and the money just kind of sits in the account until, uh, until in the future when you need to use either just a piece of it or all of it uh, for future qualified medical expenses. Now, the HSA contributions are reported as uh, above the line tax deductions. So effectively, the money you put in, you get a deduction in arriving at adjusted gross income. And, and that's in contrast to below the line deductions, which are the deductions that are treated as itemized deductions, right? So the contributions for HSAs are not itemized deductions. They're deductions in arriving at your AGI. So that, that makes them more preferable than just a simple medical expense that would otherwise just be deducted as an itemized tax deduction. So the amounts of the contributions are reported on the HSA form uh, 8889, and then, the, and then ultimately they flow through to Schedule 1 Part 2. Now, uh, some of the uh, basic background issues that you need to be mindful of with the HSAs, you can't have an HSA unless you have a high deductible health plan. Right now, the the IRS nor the HSA custodian really do any digging to to determine whether you have a high deductible plan. Right, the the responsibility here is on the taxpayer to do their research, see if their plan qualifies, and if so, go ahead and open an HSA. If you open an HSA and you don't have a high deductible plan, and you start making contributions to it and taking tax deductions, uh, that's technically tax fraud. Right, I mean you're doing something that's incorrect. And so if the IRS audits you and they find out, they will not be happy. So the, the threshold for what constitutes a high deductible plan does change. Uh, so for 2022, the IRS has defined this as a plan that has a deductible at, at least $1,400 if you're an a individual self-only coverage type of plan. And then the yearly out-of-pocket cost can't exceed uh, more than that $7,050 uh, threshold. Now. How much money can you put into the HSA? So for 2022, the contribution limit, so the amount of cash you can put in is $3,650 for a self-only plan, and then $7,300 for family coverage. And then they do go up for 2023. So these are the contribution limits for 2023, $3,850, and then $7,750 for family coverage. Now there is a, a catch-up of 1000 right? So if you're 55 years or older by the end of the tax year that you're doing this, you can add an additional thousand dollars onto that amount. Now, as far as um, 1099 reporting, uh, there are reports issued for how much cash you put in and what's taken out. So the amount of cash that you put into the account is gonna be reported on 5498SA. Now it's kind of like a 1099, right? So the IRS is gonna get a copy, you'll get a copy and you use this to complete your 88, 89 and your tax return. Distributions coming out of the HSA, so um, payments made for qualified medical expenses, right? Most HSAs, you get a debit card. If you use that card, uh, the money coming out uh, is reported as a distribution on 1099 SA. And if you just take the money out as a cash transfer, also that's gonna be reported, right? Uh, now, you, you don't necessarily get one of these every year, right? If, if the money is just sitting there and it's not being used, then you don't get a 1099 SA because you don't have any distributions. So let's look at our fact pattern here and we'll jump into TurboTax and start filling this out for John. So John is a single filing taxpayer, uh, no kids, no spouse, uh, let's say for this example. So he just has a self-only coverage health plan and it is a high deductible plan. So John's looked into this, he's talked to his insurance company, he qualifies, he has a high deductible plan. So he goes ahead and opens at HSA, and he puts $2,000 into that HSA during the 2022 calendar year. Now John gets the 5498 SA at the end of the year, which shows the $2,000 contribution he put in, 
and his employer made no contributions to the HSA. That's really important. And, and if your employer did, you would see amounts reported on your W-2. But uh, it, it's quite common for employees to have their employer put a piece in and then the employer can uh, put in some extra as long as they're still below the threshold. But in this case, John just has the HSA, his employer hasn't contributed anything to it. So John is the only person making payments here. All right, so let's look at uh, the return and start to enter some of this information. So within TurboTax, the section where you enter all these uh, details, both the cash that you put in and any distributions that they were reported on the 1099 SA is in the deductions and credits section. So if you're in the deductions and credits section and you go down to the medical section here, you can see here medical, HSA, MSA contributions. That's where we need to work. So HSA contributions here. And it's going to ask us some uh, you know, Q&A, yes or no questions, and some uh, questions on the amounts. Uh, make sure, obviously, you read all the questions thoroughly so you're answering everything appropriately because TurboTax will, you know, obviously, how you answer the questions guides you know, the deductibility of the amounts and, and so on. So we do have an HSA. Go ahead and click continue. Uh, did you use your HSA to pay for anything in 2022? Right? And so it says you probably got a 1099 SA if you did. In our case, no, right? So John just opened this account. He put the $2,000 in. He hasn't spent any of the money yet on qualified medical expenses or anything for that matter. So he's going to answer no, hasn't paid anything yet. Uh, did he inherit this HSA? No, All right? Uh, did he put money into the HSA in 2022? Yes, right? Uh, and this includes everything your employer contributed to, right? Remember, you have one limit, uh, but the employer can put some in, you can put some in, you just have to make sure you're below that threshold and you don't go over. So, yes, he did put in some money. Uh, the employer contributions is zero, right? And that's uh, because on, on John's uh, W-2, when we entered that, there was no indication that any kind of HSA contributions were made by the employer. And that's right, right? I mean, the, uh, our fact pattern, the employer hasn't put anything in. So uh, contributions he personally made is the $2,000, right? Go ahead and continue. Uh, did your employer tell you about any other contributions, right? So uh, no, right? It's uncommon, but sometimes employers make contributions to your HSA that apply to a previous year. In our case, no, that doesn't apply. All right, do we have Medicare at any time during 2022? No. Were you covered by a high deductible plan in 2022? Yes, right, so as it notes here, um, to get an HSA, you must have been covered by an HDHP first, right, so yes. I was covered by a high deductible plan at least one month during the year. What type of coverage did you have? Right, so I was covered by a self-only plan every month of the year, right? Go ahead and continue. Did you overfund your HSA in a prior year, right? This is also very important. In our case, no, because we didn't have the HSA previously, but if you do put too much money into the HSA, you have to take it out. Right, so these excess uh, contributions have to be withdrawn, or else you're, you know, you're subject to some penalties. So make sure that whatever amounts you put in the HSA are always within the uh, prescribed limits each year. Right, so remember, check the limits each year because they do change. So, no, we haven't overfunded in 2021, nor have we overfunded in this year either. Right, so no. Uh, so okay, so here's our summary. Right, and all this looks good, right? So we got a $2,000 deduction for the amount we're putting in. No distributions made during the year at all, uh, so thus no taxable distributions. What they're, what they're getting at there with the taxable distributions, if you take money out of an HSA, you're allowed to do that, it's your money, but if you don't use it for medical expenses, qualified medical expenses, then it's just income to you. Uh, and that makes sense because if you took a deduction in a prior year and now you're taking the money out and not using it for medical, well, it's got to be recorded as income, right? So go ahead and hit done. And let's go actually look at the return itself and see you know, where these numbers are, are popping out for us. So uh, open up the print preview. Uh, 2022 federal return, okay. And I'll make this bigger and zoom in for us. So the first place we need to look is the 8889. So I'm going to quickly scroll on down there 
and then we'll come back up to schedule one. All right, bear with me. Okay, here we go. Form 8889, HSA is for 2022. So we can see here in part one, this is where we record the contributions and the eventual tax deduction. And then part two is where you would have any HSA distributions. You can see here lines 14A through 17B blank because we, we don't have any distributions for the year. But part one, we do have some information, right? So we have cell phone co coverage, that looks okay. Contributions you made during 2022, including those made by the unextended due date of the return, do not include employer contributions, right? So this is fine, right? $2,000 uh, was the amount we put in. Again, no employer contributions were made. Line three is the limit, right? So we're a self-only plan. We're under 55, so we just get the standard 3650. So that's fine there. And then line four, if you do have some employer contributions, you'll see it here. Now, the nice thing with, that TurboTax does is if you enter your W-2 accurately, the number on your W-2 that your employer put in will flow automatically through to here on line four, right? Uh, but in our case, again, he, the employer didn't put any in for us, so we just have zero. That's fine. Okay. And then now it's asking us, you know, just to make sure we didn't put in... Um, um, you know, amounts that uh, exceeded the thresholds, right? Uh, so, you know, nothing's been put in here that exceeded the 3650, so we're fine, right? Um, and then we have the, there on the bottom, line 13, the HSA deduction, and to the smaller of line 2 or line 12. Um, and that's, um, you know, the smaller amount is uh, $2,000, right? So, again, uh, we kept it under the 3650 limit, so we do get a full deduction for every piece. Uh, so $2,000 is going to flow up to Schedule 1. Okay, Schedule 1. Right, so Schedule 1, Part 1 is additional income, and then Part 2 are the adjustments. And so here we see in Part 2, Line 13, HSA account deduction attach 8889 so there's our $2,000 right so that's uh, again a, a reduction to our income and in arriving at AGI all right so that covers it for this video I hope that was helpful if you have any questions uh, feel free to leave a comment below and I look forward to uh, seeing you again on the next one thanks